back to Wicked Art. It's Wicked here, and we are going to continue on this digital journey with doing a composition. Now, one thing I did explain, like, see, if I hold down the space bar button, I can pull up this uh, zoom in, zoom out, slide left and right. As long as you hold it down, you can control that. But what I'm going to show you is this is your entire page, right? So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to bring in um, a reference image. Alright, so this is my background here, so I don't ever want to draw on that one. So right here I'm going to hit Add, and you can add a new layer. Alright, or if I want to get rid of one, I can press and hold and delete. Again, you can use this sketchbook program on anything that is digital. So your computer, uh, your cell phone, uh, an iPad with a stylus, just whatever you need. But I'm going to add an image in here. Okay. And I'm going to come in here and bring in this. This is what we're going to use for our composition today. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to draw and paint this inside of Sketchbook. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this and slide it over just a little bit just so I can have some room to see. But I can honestly, I can take this and I can put this, if I hold the go up here to the selection tool. I can slide this around anywhere I want, make it as big or as small, so I'm going to shrink it down some, just for now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this layer up. I'm going to come down here to this and hold down in the center and go over to where it says rename. And I'm going to hold this and say it's a reference. Right, that way I know that that's all that that is. And then up in here, I'm going to rename this Sketch, so I can sketch this stuff out, okay? Now, you can use the pencil, you can use the uh, paintbrush, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I am going to switch to black here. As you can see right now, that's really thick, right? So if I hit Command Z, or Control Z, on your computer, Command Z on a Mac, I want to grab my bracket keys. Okay, so if you look at your computer, you can uh, grab your bracket keys this way. And I can shrink down the size until I get it to a size that I want. So right now, I'm at a size 0.9 on here. I can just grab my eraser tool and erase it out, or you could just hit the Control C key to undo. Alright, so the main thing is, is if you don't have that option because you're on a phone or something, if you just double click on it, you can adjust the size of your brush from there. Okay, so I was at a point nine. So I'm just going to do that. And we're going to start sketching out our picture. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the actual jar itself or the base. Okay, so we just want to lightly just sketch with loose lines. And you don't really worry, have to worry about how sloppy you're going to be because we're just going to paint over this anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to draw my shape of the base here. And it's going to kind of stretch out at an angle, like that. Okay, I'm going to come off the side here. And remember, pause the video if you need to. Okay, and I'm going to sketch in. See how we can't really see back, but I'm just going to guess that it closes off there. And that's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to come and swing that around. So I have that all sketched out. I might want to thin this out just a little bit. Okay. I'm also going to have my areas here. 
And it doesn't have to be one for one as far as the little lines that go through here. So like there may be 16 lines in there. I may only put in 15. That's not the point of today's lesson. It's just learning how to paint and blend and things like that. Okay. So next thing I want to do is start adding in my grapes. Okay, so I'm going to sketch me in a circle right here. Got myself my little sticks that come off. And I have another grape on the inside of my jar here. Okay, I have a rather large one sitting on top. So it's a little bit bigger, but essentially the same shape. Right, and then I have one more. It's kind of hanging over the edge here. All right, and now I'm going to come back this way and get this other grape. It's right inside of here. Okay, we have one more. It's going back this way. And another one is coming off the side over here. Again, the sizes don't have to be 100% accurate, so don't stress too much with that. So now I have my other stem coming off here. And I have that hanging over. Okay, so I have my grape here. Then I have my other grape that's kind of hanging back behind that. And then I have one more back over here. And we do have a slight stem connection coming right there. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to sketch in this pair. Now if you look it's at a different angle but if we break it down into shapes if you look right up here there is a circle and we can add a bit of your circle. So I can draw in that small circle first. Okay staying nice and loose. Now if you want to help a little bit just so you know that that's part of your pair you can erase inside. Okay and then I can get the rest of my pair by drawing the larger shape that I see. Okay, and again, to help you out, let's just get rid of the inside parts of the base here. Okay, I could also cut into my pair a little bit there. And then right here, I can give my stem a top. And then we have these little dividing lines here from the pear. Okay. Now I also have a grape that is on the ground sitting in front of my vase. So again, I can race out the inside just to help. Okay, we have a slight stem it comes off there. We also have our grapes that are behind the vase that we can build up. And again, it does not have to be uh, one for one. So I have a little bit of stems here um, that are connecting. I also have another piece that kind of comes off here before getting to the next ones. And kind of curves around like that. And then I have a grape here. Okay, then I have another grape in between these two right here that's in the back. But 
this one, now that I'm looking at it, it needs to come down just a little bit more. Okay. Now, obviously, we have the background and we have the table. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go here to my selection tool, and I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit and slide it up. Okay. And this is where we use this cool tool, which is a ruler. So you want to kind of get this as straight as you can get it. So you can use these sides to adjust your points. And I can slide about to where the edge of the table is. And you should be able to kind of look at it and eyeball it, whether it's straight or not. But once you get that on there, okay, it's like I can hold my space bar down and zoom out a little bit. Let's readjust this. Okay. So now I can just slide this all the way across. Look, it won't draw outside of that at all. Okay. And the rest of that down can be the edge of the table. But what I want to do is back here, get the edge of the wall too. So I can come through here and come through here. And now I have it sitting on a table. Okay. So I'm going to hold my space bar down and come back in close. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to start laying down our basic colors. Okay. Now an easy way to uh, continue seeing this because man, we never want to mess with this this background picture here. Okay. So if I come down here, I'm going to add another layer to it. Okay. I'm going to call that. I'm going to press down in the center. I'm going to come over to rename, and we're going to call that background. Okay. Now I'm just going to take a light gray. All right. I'm going to come up here to my paint bucket and I'm just going to fill in the background. Now I do need to take my reference and slide it back up, but now we'll be able to see things a lot better. So now I have this sketch layer. I don't want to mess with this too much because we want to be able to paint and not lose and see where our stuff is. So what I'm going to do is this little bar here on the side, I'm going to slide that down, just fade it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to click down here on this reference layer, hit the plus sign, and we're going to call this colors. That's where we're going to start adding our colors. Now, what you can do, which it's not a habit to get into, because if you look and I take this and start dragging it around, you can see all the different colors that it's made up. So it's mainly like a red color, right? So I want to pick a point on here. that's kind of a base tone for the red. So we're going to start with these grapes here. All right. Now I can choose to just continue to use this brush here. Uh, you can come down here through the list and you could do any synthetic paints or anything, but we're going to keep it simple today. We're just going to stick with a basic brush. I'm going to hit my bracket keys. This one right here on the right is going to make my brush bigger. All right. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to paint the color of my grapes. Okay. So see how I filled it in and I kind of painted over that. That's okay. We can still see where the stem is to where we can come back later. So all I'm doing is just kind of painting in where my grape shapes are. Okay, so I'm going to fill those in. I'm going to come down here and get these grapes as well. So all we're doing is laying down a base foundation for everything. Okay, I have my grapes down here at the bottom. And again, this, this stuff works the same in, in Photoshop. Photoshop's got some extra features. Um, that this does not have, but it's not many. Um, and the reason why I'm showing you this is, is I want to make these videos for anybody. So this is a free program that you can download to your iPad, computer, all that stuff, okay? Now, you want to just kind of get in the habit of though, being able to see, right? So if I zoom in on this, this is kind of that brown color right in here. So you got to start being able to find these browns, right? So what you could do is just see, okay, well, you know, yellow and orange make brown. 
so I can come in here and slide around until I find a color that looks kind of like a stem color. Okay, I can then use my bracket key on the left and adjust the size. And I'm looking at that and going, okay, that's too bright. So I'm going to slide down some and give it more of a brown texture. I can come back up to this one since I know that's where it's at. Color that in. And get my stems over here. Okay. So, once you get used to seeing the colors, though, you won't have to use this so much, but we're just going to do that today. So, we want to kind of kind of find this base tone. So, this pear is kind of got like this yellowy brown color. Okay. Now, obviously, there are some other colors in there as well which we will get into but for now I just want to really make sure I get that shape of my pair so I'm going to finish painting that in All right I can come back with my color picker and pick that brown and we can go a little actually pick the black but we can go a little darker with it so just slide it down just so it matches the stem more and then we have that All right now obviously this is white okay but if we click on it and look it's not it's more like a cream Right, still kind of everything because of the background in here is reflecting this orange tint. So if you notice, everything's staying over here in these warm areas. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to use that, and I'm going to paint out the shape of my handle. Now look, see how I kind of got outside there. If I want to trim that back up, I can just so that we kind of keep the same size. Again, it does not have to be perfect. All right, I want to come in here and start working that in on this side here as well. Now, we are not going to touch the table or the background yet because we want to do that on a separate layer. So when you get into these tight spaces, if it's starting to bleed in, like see how that does bled in right there? So what I can do is I can go backwards and I can decrease my brush size so it doesn't bleed over too much to ensure that I keep my colors where I want them. Okay. Fill that in like that, and then I can re-increase my brush size to these open areas so it doesn't take as long to film in. So just remember those bracket keys on your computer are what's going to help with that. If not, you're just going to have to double click on the brush and adjust the size from there. So like right now I'm setting at an 8 with this and working these colors in. Um, work my way around these grapes again try not try not to bleed inside your other colors if you do it's okay you can just hit undo or decrease your brush size okay so like right here where it's really skinny I'm gonna need to shrink my brush down to about a three and to get in between the stem here I'm just going to follow up. Again, it's really tight here. Okay. So I have the basic colors of everything. I'm going to start coming in here and start looking at shadows and different colors. Okay, so for today, like I said, just because we're learning, um, I don't want you 
to sit here too much and try to guess the colors and we'll get to that at a different point. So if I come over here, we have that yellow, right? And I start working down here into these browns. I kind of have this like darker green tone down in here. Okay, so just take your little picker brush and come down into the shadow like right where it starts to blend in. I'm going to pick that green and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start um, putting in that, that base shadow. So what you really want to look at is if you need to squint your eyes a little bit, you can see the shadows. Right, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm just literally going to draw the shape of my shadow here. Now, if you really look at the picture, it's really dark down here towards the bottom, but we'll get to that. Okay. So once we start getting this stuff in here, you'll start seeing the shape. So you can see how this is starting to build up already a 3D shape for our image. Okay, We might want to kind of extend this back to where it starts to wrap around. Alright, I'm going to take my picker again. I can come in here and really find that dark shadow. Okay, Again, squinting my eyes. I want to highlight this region down in here. Right? So I'm going to come in here and draw that shape that I see and cover those areas that that shadow is covering okay now another thing that we want to do is come in here on our stem area so all I'm doing is clicking and holding down to find the colors that I'm looking for, right? So now that I'm in this stem, I really want to get that shadow right here. So I'm going to shrink my brush down. I'm going to hold my space bar, and I'm going to zoom in, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that shadow shape right inside of here. Just like that. I want to make sure that I get the edge of that stem. Okay. And we can kind of have a hard edge on this because it's darker. Alright, I'm going to hold my space bar. And I'm going to zoom back out just a little bit. Alright. Now the next thing that I can do is we need to blend this together. There are several ways that you could do this. I could take an airbrush and brush that in there. But we also have these cool little brushes down here. So if I just scroll down until I see this smudge area here, right? I have all of these different brushes in here. Okay? And this is what smudging does. See how it just kind of smudges it around? That might be a little bit too rough, right? So if we come back up, we have there's a blend impression here. Just give me a a minute. It's been a little bit since I've been inside of here. Okay, we have this blur tool. See how that gives us a softer edge and transition? Okay, so that's one option. I'm just going to hit Command Z and go back. Um, there is a blending brush in here, <laughs> and we will find it together. down in here. There we go. 
So we have this blending tool right here. So you want to go down to the artist section, click on blending. Okay, I can shrink my brush size down. And what I can do is start hitting up this edge. You don't have to press down hard or anything. Okay, and we can start blending the two colors together. So it's more of a soft transition. I'm going to do the same thing right down here on the edge here. I'm just going to work that so that it's nice and smooth. what that's doing it's kind of picking up on the colors now I can hold this alt key and pick that color that's in between and I can smooth that out even more so along this edge you just don't want to get too crazy so we're just blending that out making it nice and smooth I'm going to do the same thing up in our stem now watch what happens when I'm done with that and I turn off my line work. You see how that's starting to take shape? Okay. Oops. See so these little eyeballs will turn off your layers. Alright. So that takes care that. Now I want to make sure that this is readily available. So see how I'm going to click and press down on this. I'm going to slide this up until I get to my main palette. I can just add it there so it's easily accessible. Okay, So I'm going to switch back to my brush. I'm going to take my little picker tool and I'm going to come over these highlight areas. Okay. So we have this really bright cream. I'm going to increase my brush size just a little bit. What we want to do is we want to kind of look in these areas and find the spots that have the majority of our highlights. Okay, I'm going to get as close to the edge as you possibly can. I can switch back to my smudging tool my blending tool and I can blend that in to soften it up give it a nice transition okay and that's again gonna make our fruit look like that okay now you can see some of these areas too I can hold down the alt key or just click my color picker switch back to my brush some of the stuff is not filled in so I can get as close to the edge as I need to and just make the adjustments from there so we want these to have nice clean edges just adjust that real quick so it doesn't look so I guess the word would be lumpy All right, and I can hold alt and I can fill in some of these blank spots that are popping up and as long as you press alt see how I'm switching back again I can fix whichever color so like I think my grape actually needs to come out more like that okay same here these grapes should be touching these stems so I'll make sure that they come out long enough that they are okay I can turn my sketch back on and now I'm going to take my color picker and I'm going to hold down and get these 
darker areas. So see where it starts to transition that black? I want to come slightly out and get that little bit of a darker red. All right, so now I'm going to come in and start adding the shadow of my grapes. And just work my way around. Now obviously, we have some darker areas, and we will get those next, just like we did with the uh, pear down there. But I'm just going to make sure I fill in this first set at the moment. Okay, I'll come down and get this one. Fill in this side here. Let's go ahead and come up. Fill that in as well. Okay, we want to get these bottom half of these grapes here. Go ahead and get this side. You notice I'm kind of putting a curve to it as I go. Now this side is not getting very much light at all, so we're going to have more area to cover with that. Okay, I'm going to hold my space bar, shift down a little bit. I'm going to get this bottom grape down here. Okay, so we'll fill in that shadow there. Come down to these grapes here. Fill in our shadow work here. And don't ever let anybody tell you you cannot use a reference because you can. The only thing you can't do is take somebody else's artwork <laughs> and redraw it and claim it for you. Oh, now you can study somebody else's artwork, and that's fine, but just never claim it as your own. But since this is a photograph, it's okay to use. All right. So I'm going to take my clicker again. I'm going to go in here to these grapes and hold down. I'm going to find that darker shadow. Okay. So it's kind of a deep red, so I'm going to hit up these bottom areas here. All right, come inside here. And just get these darker shadow areas. And on our grapes. So again, it's very helpful if you squint and look at the image to see what you're looking for. And you just work your way around. And remember, good art takes time. So don't go through this and try to rush and be done. You really need to make sure that you're taking your time with it. I know we always want to be fast and quick and show everybody how amazed we are with our stuff, but the more you take your time and really work it in there, the better it's going to end up looking anyway. Okay, so we got that bottom area. We're going to work our way up this side of the grate. And then we have a lot of this area because it's completely almost being blocked by the grape in front of it. Okay. So now we're going to come in here, get these bottom grapes. Again, I am just simply using a paintbrush and a smudge tool. There are a lot fancier brushes on here we could use. I'm going to save that for more advanced stuff later if this is something you're liking. Okay. Come in here and we 
have this grape being blocked by the two grapes in front of it. So we're going to kind of add more in that one. And then we are going to add in that shadow there. Now I can switch that off if I want and come in here and see the areas that I need to fill in. So like I need to now extend this grape out just a little bit. Make sure it's touching the stem. All right, so I'm gonna change to my blending brush. Now these grapes are smaller, so I'm gonna shrink my brush size down with my bracket keys, about a five. Okay, and I'm just gonna blend that in. Make it a nice soft transition from both colors. Okay, so you just go through all your grapes. And once we get an idea what that looks like, it'll help us blend in those highlights on there as well. Okay, so this is just a basic painting tutorial. I'm not going to do super, super fancy yet, but at least give you a way to start practice shading in a digital art program. So again, we're going to smudge that out, and blend it out. Make it nice and smooth. So you should see it start getting a lot softer, and that's how you'll know when you're done smoothing it in. Again, you don't want to go too crazy because then you'll just blend out all your colors and you won't have anything there. Alright, so I'm just going to continue around and blend these in, just kind of smooth them over the top of each other. That's nice and soft. Come down here to these grapes. And just continue to work my way through. Make sure we smooth them out. thing I want to take care of are my stems. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and take my color picker. I'm going to come in here and hold down and we're going to try to find that darker color on the stem. Okay, So you can see it's getting very pixelated. Well, we can eventually find ourselves almost a darker brown. So I'm going to switch but I'm going to have to get thin. All right. So if we look like right in here, we have some shadow, but then it switches back to this side. So if we need to, we can turn off our sketch and make sure that we get these edges in here. Same thing down here. I have my darker edge on these stems. And then don't worry, we're going to come back and hit these highlights up. Okay, so I have a slight 
shadow down in here on my stem. I'm also going to have a shadow on this side. And it's going to work its way up this side of the stem. Just really looking at those shapes, okay? And we're going to need to do a little bit of a shadow here, as well as this outside edge. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and slide it down just a tad. I'm going to shrink my brush size down to about a 0.6. And I'm going to really hit up the outside edge on the right side of these stems. Okay. Just to help define it somewhere. Now we have a little bit more of a transition, a third color, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to hit up that edge. Maybe thicken this area up just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take my blending tool, I'm going to hold down my space bar, and I'm going to zoom in on these areas. Okay, I'm going to shrink that down to about 0 0.9. Now let's do a 1. Okay, I'm going to start blending these colors in. You can tell as I zoomed in, I'm missing a lot from this inside area, but we can fix all that. Okay, so I just really want to make sure I smooth out these edges. Maybe bring it up a size to two. There we go. Now we're starting to get a nice, good blending. So let's say we'll do two on that. And just get all the stem work. I'm holding the space bar to shift and move. And holding the space bar again so I can move around. Alright, just really blending those colors in. Those nice even transitions. Alright, hold my space bar and I can zoom back out again. Alright, turn my lines back on and we only have the highlights on these left. So let's take our picker and really get to that light right there. Okay, I'm going to take my paintbrush, I'm going to increase the size just a little bit, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put these highlights on my grapes. And just the spots that we can see them in the image. Get a little slight peak of one there. Slight one here. Got some here and up here. I'm going to do the same on my stem. I'm going to come in here and really get that whitest 
area there. Okay. I'm going to shrink my brush down just a little bit. And I am going to hit up those highlighted areas on the stem. And there's not a lot. Just a few edges in here. Okay, so I'm just going to really get a highlighted edge. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to hold down my space bar. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, I'm going to take my blending brush. Uh, we'll go up to three on this one. And I'm going to really blend that in. Give it more of a natural reflective look. Again, hold down the space bar to shift around. And go up and hit up my stems as well. And again, if you don't want to keep the sketch layer on, you don't have to. I just like to see where my fake edges are, for lack of a better term. Okay, let's come up in here and get these grapes all blended in. And it's okay to leave a little bit of, like, see, I'm leaving some streakiness to it. You don't want it to be perfectly rounded. Okay, so if I hold down my space bar, come back out, turn off that layer, you can see how it's starting to bring our picture out, right? So the last thing we have is our base, okay? So this is our, bright, our base color here, so we want to kind of come back some and get a little bit of a shadow. I'm going to pick my paintbrush. Okay, I'm going to increase the size up just a little. Now, if you notice, we have these highlighted rim edges here. Okay, so we want to kind of come back and get those. So for now, it's okay to go ahead and fill those in wherever there is shadow. Remember, if you mess up, just hit Control or Command Z, depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC. Okay, but we're just going to hit up these shadow areas. Just paint in what you see. Our grapes here. Obviously, our shadow work is going to be darker on this back side, but we're going to go ahead and fill it in with what we got for now. Okay, now the handle has a lot of shadows on it. So, when we get to that, this color is only going to really go. Let me go back, kind of went into my grape a little bit. Um, it's only going to go in a couple spots on the handle. Okay, so like this top edge here, when it curves, I'm going to have that there. And then this back edge here. I'm going to have that there, like that. Now, next thing I want to do is we're going to do this bottom half of those little division lines that we put in here. Just the underside of it. I'm going to do that across the whole thing. It does not have to be perfectly even because we're just going to blend it in anyway. It's just going to give us that 
help make those ridges 3D. I kind of went outside a little bit, so. But I'm just going to continue to work that over. I can follow the shape of my pair here. And even back on this end. Okay. And the same thing here. We want to kind of go along the bottom side. Okay. And now I want to come into getting my darker areas. Sorry, I messed a spot up here. Alright, so I want to really get this darker shadow that's back over here. Okay. So we're going to really hit up the bottom of the vase here. In this back corner. So we want that to kind of come up this way. Stop underneath that pair. I'm going to do that to the front here. Now, if you want to see a trick, I can click right here at this edge and hold shift and watch what it does. It'll draw a straight line so I don't have to worry about messing it up. Let's see, we're getting to a point now where it starts to curve so we don't want to do that too much. Remember command Z, control Z to undo if you accidentally do something you didn't like. Okay, so we need to get this whole back edge. We're just going to paint over that. Squeeze that in between right there. I can already tell I messed up on this right here. So I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to pick this color on that stem because this should be a stem right here. Okay, I'm going to just hold Alt and go back to the original color. Alright, now this whole back handle is going to get that shadow. So I'm just going to paint around. Just fill that in. Went outside a little bit, so I'm going to clean it up some. Bring it back. Okay. So. Now we need to do the same as before, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that highlight on here. So I'm going to color pick that really light cream color. Okay. And I'm going to hit up this outside edge. It kind of starts to curve out this way. So I'm going to have that there. And then I'm just going to hit up these front edges. right in here and then to give it that cool reflective quality right in here we kind of have a little streak of reflections that come down this way okay so if we turn that off you can see how that's brought out our shape now Alright, so I'm going to come in here and hold my space bar. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Let me switch back to my brush. I'm going to hold Alt. Or you can get your color picker, but I need to make sure that these edges are straight. I'm going to click Alt and pick that light color again. I'm going to shrink my brush down to about a 1. And we want this top edge to be reflective. So we're going to bring that back into these grapes. And 
just like that. And I'm going to hit Alt and come in and fill in some of these spots on here. Okay. The rest of it, we can switch to our smudge tool. Let's bring that up a size about five. Oops, don't want to go too far. Okay, we kind of smudge those edges. Okay, I can hit up my edge here around the grapes. And blend those in. Get that nice soft transition. Sorry about that, I kind of went a little crazy went over my reflection there, so you got to be careful of that. I'm going to come in here, blend the edge of my reflection. I don't want to touch it too bad because I don't want it to get ruined. Let's come back here. out. Go ahead and work my way back on the handle on this one. the rest down over here. It's really hitting up the edges. Making a nice smooth transition between the two. And if you're losing too much of that darker shadow, you can always shrink it down. That way it's still there. But again, we're going for a very painterly approach to this, so we're not going to stress too much on perfectionism. Just kind of really showing you the basics of shading in here and you know a method of blending that you can use okay so fix that up edges in here and we're almost done with our objects okay, we'll blend these in on the front hold down my spacebar out. Now I'm going to turn my sketch lines back on. Okay, so next thing I want to do is because if you look, if I zoom out, this thing is like 
grave for days, alright? So, what I'm going to do is we are going to change inside of this area. So, now that we have this, this background selected, alright, I'm going to go ahead and color pick that edge of the table, which is dark. As you can see, it's almost black. Okay, so we're going to use that on the background. Uh, the background. All right, I am going to increase my brush size. Now watch this. I don't have to stress. Let's do the way I showed you before. Okay, so I'm going to click and hold Shift. I'll help you keep that straight a little bit. And I'm going to fill in the rest of this. Now, <laughs> forgive me. Hit Control Z and go back. All right, we need to come take this down. And we're going to go across with it. Let's turn our ruler back on. Come down this way. Okay. Come back up and turn our ruler back on again. Okay, I'm gonna go across. And then I can just fill in the rest, or I can be faster. I'll click my paint bucket, click back on my paintbrush. Be careful that you don't go outside of it, so it's not a permanent border. This is going to be the edge of our table. So I'm going to paint that in nice and solid. Don't worry about this down here at the bottom because we're just going to crop the picture anyway. Okay, So we're just going to go around, fill on that front edge of the table. All right, now I'm going to take my color picker. I'm going to find that base brownish orange color that they have there. Okay, I'm going to take my ruler. And I'm going to slide it up to that line. And I'm going to go straight from one edge all the way over. See how it goes behind? This is why the layer system is cool, because it's underneath it. It's behind it. It doesn't do anything to it. OK. Now I'm going to take my ruler again and go right on that edge. OK. And it's going to be the front of my table. And then. I can simply close that, close that, hit my paint bucket, fill that in, and turn it off, go back to your paintbrush. And now we have a solid object. So now if I turn my sketch lines off, so see how it looks like it's sitting on a table now, right? So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my color picker, and I'm going to get that shadow that's down here on the ground, the cast shadows from the pears and all that other stuff, okay? I'm going to hold my spacebar, zoom in, I can see where they're at, okay? So we can kind of give ourselves our shadows. So I'm going to go back up here and look, okay? So we have a shadow under there. We're going to have a slight shadow here. All right. And we're going to have these shadows here under the grapes. Okay. So if I zoom out, now they look like they're sitting on the table. But the next thing I want to do is I want to take my blending brush just on the shadows. Okay. And I want to hit up those edges. So it gives it kind of this faded look. And we can spread that out. And you want to be careful not to touch that edge down here because that is a hard edge from our table. 
and then I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. I'm going to really blend that in. Okay. Next thing, we're going to hit up our background. Okay. Now, we're going to do this a little bit different. I am going to use my color picker and get that brown orange color. The next thing I want to do is come down into these brush sets down here, the synthetic paint. Okay. So, like if I take this white bristle brush and start painting, see how it does this crazy, like real paint pattern? We're going to find one that's going to give us some texture. Okay. So we're under the artist tab. We've got a hairbrush. Try this bleeding watercolor. So that looks really good. Okay. So let's go ahead and take the color that we got. I'm going to hit Command Z. And we're going to darken that. Okay. But what we want to do is see how that's bleeding over there? Let's add. Alright. Let's add another background. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to line it up this edge right here. Okay. Let's bring it up just a tad. I'm going to go back up real quick with my eraser. I'm going to... Okay, that might be too big. So <laughs> let's shrink that down. Okay, so that was... About a size nine. All right. And then from there, I can turn that off. I can make it bigger. I'm gonna erase out the entirety of this upper half here. Okay. So we're just gonna erase all the way through. that background out. Okay, so that's all good to go. Oops. Yeah, don't do that. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and hit the plus button. Make sure I'm on that background layer. I'm going to click on this. Go up. Then I'm going to come down here and rename that wall. Okay. So now look, now when I come down here and I find a brush that I like, I think we're on that artist section, right? So if I come in here, look, see how it goes behind it? We don't have that issue anymore. Okay. We're going to find a different brush here. Let's come up here to the synthetic paints. All right. So we're going to come up here, the synthetic paint, we're going to find ourselves a good bristle brush here. Now, those are fading too much. Let's find ourselves something good here. Let's see if the watercolor is fading too much. Paintbrush. Can't see. Oh, that looks pretty good. Conceptual. Glaze. Hairbrush. Not doing too much. Yeah. So let's do. Let's just do that. Let's do the, um, which one was that? Shark Glaze. Let's do the conceptual one. Okay. So I'm going to come back in here and pick that red color. Okay. And I'm going to move over so I can see more. We're going to put that in there. 
Okay, we're just going to be nice and loose. We'll color that up. Alright. Nice and loose. Let's fill in that whole thing. Don't have to be anything fancy. Okay, let's just fill in the whole thing. Okay. Now what I want you to do, once that's filled in, I want you to take your color picker and find that darker brown area. Okay, we're going to come in here. And just kind of pick these two dark areas. And we're just going to kind of bleed over the top of each other. Okay, I'm going to pick that color again with the Alt button. And we'll go just like that. Okay. Now I can take my blending brush. Right. I can make it increase in size. And we can blend that together. You can be loose. Oops. You can be loose and scribbly with that. Give it a little bit of a wall texture. Okay. And I can come down to this splatter section. Right. Let's try this one. See what happens. I'm going to pick this one here. And let's go from the color we have. Let's go a little bit darker. See what this one looks like. Come back up to our blending brush. And then we'll just add a little bit more color on that background. Okay, so if I take my reference image, hit the select button, and size it up, we can compare the two. It's not bad for a beginner's level stage of painting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off, and this is what you have. All right, now you could add on the ground background, right? We could come in here and go to like this texture brush uh, you can add a couple little streaks in there just to give it some detail all right and then what we'll do let's see where he's got too much of a spread we'll go to this crop tool Okay, and we will start about right here. Now watch, if I hold the space bar, or sorry, if I drag it out enough, I can cut off this edge right here where we got a little sloppy. I can hit the check mark, and now I have a completed painted image. Okay? So I know this one was a little long, guys, but I really wanted to show you the ins and outs of digital art. I hope you learned something. I hope you had some fun, and I want you to do the homework. I want you to find some pictures, go in there, and try to use the same method. If you like this video and you want to learn more, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Also, feel free to share your work with me on Twitter at WickedArt5. I would love to see your progress. Other than that, keep sketching, and have a good day.